The first, the first question reads, in what ways does your media artefact use, develop, or challenge the conventions of real media products? Our media artefact, named Karma, has many inspirations. As a group, we all discussed where we wanted our media artefact to go and what we wanted it to look like. We had, we had some trouble trying to find a good theme for our production. However, we soon found a couple of ideas that suited the actors and our own intentions and messages that we wanted to convey in our mini movie opening. Inspiration came through many different forms, such as the 2011 thriller Drive, or the uh, online trailer for the game Hotline Miami. Um, we wanted to kind of emulate these because they were very dark and mysterious, and they just fit with what we wanted to go with for our production. The mise on scene is very mysterious, and we wanted the scene to be filled with neg negative connotations to symbolise the killer's true nature. And as this, this actually challenges the con typical conventions of the thriller genre. We wanted to include the majority of the scenes and have them in the dark to like really reinforce and emphasise the darkness of the killer's like true nature and motives. And um, as the killer is an anti-hero, this uh, conforms to the typical thriller conventions. Question two reads, how does your media product represent certain social groups? In our media production, we've only selected a few characters. We have one male character, who appears to be speaking on the phone, and another of which is of course our main character, who happens to be the killer. It appears that we have a third, uh, when there is the first person screenshot of the killer stabbing his victim. We decided this uh, victim was going to be female. We don't actually show the body of the, uh, the victim, because we find it insignificant. Uh, more, not insignificant, but more so that the killer would be our main character that we wanted to focus on. Yeah. The opening sequence is quite bath in both lighting and in general, so the characters shown may be assumed to be quite negative, meaning they're being portrayed as antagonists. The characters were meant to be both in contact with each other, uh, with the character on the phone giving the killer instructions on whom to kill. Kind of like a hitman, uh, so of course the killer is going to be seen as an antagonist or an anti-hero. Re regards to the killer, we've decided that we'd let him fit the general stereotypes of a killer. Mysterious and wearing a mask helps us. In our production, we've decided to have a lack of female actors and characters. We have done this to make the audience think the only female that is shown in the production is being attacked. This is a stereotypical view of females. In most thrillers, we see the females being the inferior gender, being the usual gender who cannot defend themselves. We stereotypically see females play the less prominent role in thriller films. We have therefore chosen to follow this typical convention of the thriller genre and have the female in our production to be a woman who is unable to defend herself. The main character is portrayed very negatively as he only appears in like very low light, dark shots and he has no lines, emphasising that he's mysterious. This symbolises the instability that he is so calm after killing someone, and the shot of him like walking through the shopping centre just after killing someone reinforces this. In regards to the question, what kind of media institution would distribute your product and why? We originally said that we would distribute the movie ourselves, but since then we have found out that it would cost a lot of money to do so. And so we have researched two independent film distributors to find out which one is the best. One of them is called Film District. This is the film distributor behind our inspiration, Drive. This organisation, although quite popular, they are quite new as they are, were only founded in 2010, meaning it is only a small organisation. This is also good because it fits in nicely with our film. The other organisation we had the chance to look at is Entertainment Film Distributors. As like the previous organisation, this is also relatively small, despite it releasing some award-winning box office hits like the Rush Hour films and the Lord of the Rings trilogy. The organisation is quite small, which fits again with our filmmaking, uh, so therefore it's a strong candidate for the position. Out of both of the distributors, we choose Film District because with this organisation we share similar interests and both of us are new. Uh, this is the organisation which distributed our inspiration, or our main inspiration, Drive, and unlike the other organisation, this one is very focused in its genre of films, which is why we choose them. Question four. Who would be the audience of your media product? The audience for our media production would be most people who enjoyed the thriller genre. This can relate to audiences from the, array, from the age of around 18 plus. 
This is the age certificate which has been given to our media production because we feel that the age is sufficient enough for the levels of violence and gruesomeness, including the production. In regards to socio-economic groups, we're appealing to those in B or C1 and below, which is middle class and below. This is because the characters involved are not included within the higher groups and so they can't relate back to the production. This includes the users and gratifications theory of audiences being able to relate to the production and gain a relationship or pleasure from it. With regards to things like national nationality or ethnic makeup, we have not targeted any specific nationality or ethnic grouping. We seem to aim our production primarily at male audiences. This may be because of the lack of inclusion of female characters or the continuous development and usage of filler genre conventions. Question 5 reads, how did you attract and address your audience? We say that we did this by including items and scenes that our audiences would find interesting. We attract those who have an interest in a fuller genre by including scenes such as the one where the character gets stabbed in the park. We also include backgrounds such as cars and public parks as these add realism to the production. The two main characters included are both male and this will attract the attention of males because they generally prefer male leads. Our production goes against the uh, typical thriller male lead stereotypes because our hero is not heroic or chivalrous. He's somewhat of an anti-hero and he's very mysterious, which almost makes him an antagonist, which is not the normal case when you're watching a thriller to have the main character be the antagonist. We thought this would attract a new, newer audience to the production because it's something that's not usually done and it would attract a different audience rather than doing the same thing as any other thriller and having it just be very common. Our next question reads, what have you learned about, about the technologies you have used? Uh, we've learned a lot about the editing and also the filming of a production because of this task. Using Final Cut Pro to edit at the beginning was quite cumbersome because we were all new to it and none of us had had any previous experience using the software and we were a bit overwhelmed because of that. After editing the prelim, however, we all got significantly more comfortable using it and gradually as time went on and we were editing more and more of the pieces, it became like more fluid and this is reflected in the production. We got more confident with the software as we used it more and we ended up being fairly proficient with it being able to edit the piece to a professional standard and we feel like it fit with the conventions of an independent thriller. We were able to make it look very professional by using the crossfade transitions to merge shots, using the fade on the music, using the credits effectively and having a basic house style for the fonts. As for the technology that we used to film the actual uh, movie opening, we knew the basics uh, such as camera angles and lighting. Uh, we also know here how to cam uh, how to operate the cameras, <coughs> but uh, the only issue we really came across was th uh, the sound. Uh, due to a few of our shots being very an uh, animated and the camera moving around a lot, we had to reduce the sound at certain points to cover the cameraman's footsteps and also hide any wind interference. Another technology that we were new to was GarageBand, uh, which we used to create the soundtrack because we didn't want to use a copyrighted song for our final production piece because we wanted it to be unique, unlike in the prelim where we used the theme tune to the shaft. Uh, this was done by using music loops in GarageBand to create an original score that builds tension by gradually building up to an event. Originally the score went all the way through the production, however we edited it and cut it down to make it only play during certain scenes, as we also used Soundtrack Pro, Pro briefly to alter the car door shutting sound effect and make it louder, as when we downloaded it, it was very quiet. Overall, we learned quite a lot about the technology used in the making of the film, uh, and it was all directly as a result of this task. Question 7 reads, what have you learned about media production from this task? We have learned a massive amount since our preliminary task, as we have used the technology more and also learned how more about the production in films. Our prelim task was quite basic really, as it was just a montage of us walking and then a long take of an interrogation. We liked the walking scenes, but the interrogation felt rushed and not as varied as we would have liked with the angles and the lighting and the dialogue as we would have liked because of time restraints. The music we put on the prelim was also basic, as it was just the theme to the 70s TV show Shaft that we downloaded from the internet. 
and we also had to abandon the idea that stemmed from the prelim of a detective crime thriller with a detective protagonist who sinks down to the killer's level to catch him. This was due to the fact that we could not find suitable actors to make it look believable, as it would just have been teenagers acting like detectives, which does not look professional at all. We then changed to our second idea about a bullying victim who snaps and kills his bullies. This was then scrapped after we had, we had filmed because we liked the idea, however we could not successfully pull it off. We changed to our final idea of a mysterious killer for hire, who is very isolated as we follow him on a job. This was our favourite idea and was also our most successfully produced piece as we became more confident with the software used in media production. We also learned a lot about budgeting and the distribution of films. Our knowledge of budgets was about as much as the average person, however we found out how hard it was to accurately budget a production as we wanted to stay below £30 for our shoot, however we ended up exceeding it due to needing a new fake knife after one of them broke on set of our second shoot. The distribution of films was something we knew very little about collectively, so we had to learn a bit about them. We went out and researched uh, a variety of different uh, fil film distribution organisations and by the end of it we found two which most suited our, our film and then we, we went with Film District after we um, carefully examined each one to find which one best suited our film. Time management was important to us, however we found it very hard to meet the deadline for the evaluation due to conflicting schedules. We found it very useful to go to draft and re-edit the pieces after feedback. This allowed us to improve our editing techniques and also to make the piece better, suited to our target audience. <coughs> we did not make use of shot lists or mise-en-scene lists due to time constraints which we fail may have hurt our overall quality, as it would have made the shoot more streamlined. The, uh, the audience feedback was very important to us because it allowed us to improve our product after we had edited it and it just allowed us to re redraft it and make it better quality.